Hello. So I'm here to change the suction control valve on my vehicle. Actually, what I'm, I'm not going to even change it. I've got one in the mail from Alibaba in China for $70, but it's not here yet. And I've been doing a lot of reading on uh, the internet that these things, they foul a lot because the tolerances are so so thin and that they can be serviced and uh, you know loosen up the tolerances a little bit and that they last a long time. So I'll, I'll put a link to that. Uh, that forearm thread. I, I really am appreciative of it and we'll see how it goes. I'm going to pull the unit out of here that's malfunctioning and try to service it and then put it back in there and see how it works. But uh, yeah, I, the only reason I'm here and I, and I trust anyone watching this is when I took the car in it was having problems. The dealership ran an OBD diagnostics and then they told me I need a new fuel filter and suction control valve was failing. And then they told me the price on the suction control valve which is almost $400. So I thought to myself I, I, I could almost buy an engine for that. So. No, no valve is going to cost $400. And I was right. I had them change the fuel filter and then uh, try to clean the suction control valve and, and put it back in. And I've been able to drive on it a little bit since. But uh, really what's happening is the car is just uh, driving along fine, but with a little, a little hesitation in, ex in s accelerator or throttle response. And then all of a sudden the throttle just cuts out. It's like it's, it's starved for air. And eventually the motor shuts down. You turn the key off, turn it back on, it resets, and it dries fine for a while. Well, now it's just doing it so frequently that I can't even take a, a several mile trip without it shutting down and turning back on. I tried to turn it down, while, uh, turn it off while driving. I thought that would be clever and reset it while driving, but when you shut it off while the vehicle is moving, it, it makes a terrible clunk sound. And I sure would appreciate if someone would comment and tell me what they think that clunk sound is. I also one time heard a, like a winding sound, uh, it really didn't sound good, so I pulled over, stopped the car, and then turned it off and turned it back on. So that's when, what I've been doing is stopping the car, turning it off, and then turning it back on, that's been resetting it. But yeah, don't pay $400, don't pay $200, you can get the part for an Enzo part or Denzo part, whatever it is, off, uh, from China for maybe 40, 50 bucks. And I did find one locally here. They wanted almost 200 So, But what's the point if it's just going to crud up again? I'm in the Philippines, so I don't know whether there's a storage problem, the fuel uh, is bad, or I don't think it's the fuel is bad, but probably there's a storage or transportation problem. This vehicle has less than 20,000 uh, miles, but it is a 2009 Montero Sport, uh, and this is 2006. So the vehicle sat for a while, presumably with some fuel, so that could have uh, made the fuel go bad. Who knows? But we'll take a look at it. Okay, so here we are. I've got the engine up. And the culprit part. This is a 2.5 liter motor, by the way. And the engine's kind of warm, but the culprit part is right there. The tip of my finger. That's the suction control valve. I'll be pulling that out. To get to it, I'll probably have to remove the battery. And we'll see. It's just going to be probably... This bolt here, and this bolt here, and if, let's see, the tray may be attached underneath. I'll take another video if that's the case. All right, that came out as easily as expected. I just disconnected the battery and then uh, pulled the two attachments off and put the tray right there. So there, that exposes the suction control valve. It looks like we have a couple hex uh, bolts holding it on and a electrical wire Let's see just kind of depress the, the Lever here see if I can pull this off Yeah, no problem Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the hex wrench in here and in here now I'm wondering if fuel is going to come out so I have a rag handy. I'll crack it and see if it Starts to spray or whatever. I don't know call me Naive for wondering this. I don't know. So we'll see. Well, I've got the screws out. Surprisingly, I mean, I just drove my car a little bit ago. They were quite, quite stiff in there. I took a little bit of a snug with that wrench, and they were quite warm too. So actually, no fuel spurted out or anything like that. So it looks like I'm ready. I do smell fuel though. I'll tell you that. Um, it's loose. You can see. It's quite hot though too. So maybe I'll wait a minute and let it cool down before going further but I think what I'm gonna do is just pull it out we go suction control valve remove just a slight drip of fuel 
I don't, it doesn't seem to be flowing or anything. It looks to be a, a gasket there. So be careful. It stays there. Make sure it doesn't get dirty. Now I'm gonna go ahead and service this suction control valve. I'm about ready to service this. I have uh, some 2000 grit sandpaper, some WD-40 to help me when I polish it. Uh, some solvent, this is denatured alcohol. The, the post I read said brake cleaner. I think brake cleaner would be better, but I do like denatured alcohol that I should do. Uh, these are uh, snap ring pliers. I have some a drill and some electrical tape. And hopefully that's all I need. So let's get started. All right, so my wife did mention to me my lovely rag here, which is an old pair of boxers. I have old socks, old boxers. These are, these are what I use for rags. Okay, so the first step is removing this retaining clip. And hoping that these are small enough to do this. But they're not. Okay. So I'm going to modify my spring clip head so that I can do this. Okay, so I filed the tip down of my pliers quite a bit. I made sure to wash them thoroughly because the last thing we want is any metal fibers in here. Retaining ring out. Okay. Okay, now that I have that out, I'm going to stick these in the middle. Yeah, it's uh, and there I go. Extract that. Okay. They say you want to make sure you put everything back so you pay attention to the winding of the spring. I'm just going to leave it like that. Having it uh, filmed is it. I think those are the only parts there. You spring and this piston of sorts. Now, I guess what gets mucked up is there's scoring on here. It's hard to see. What we're going to do now is chuck this up on a drill bit and polish it with two. There's some sco obvious scoring right there. Look at that. And then uh, we're going to polish this up with some 2000 grit sandpaper and that will remove the scoring and increase the tolerances a little bit. All right. Okay, so per the post on the forum that I'll reference, a guy had uh, basically wrapped a little electric tape around a drill bit and then shoved it in to chuck this up on a drill. And that's what I'll do now. All right, so I've got it chucked up on the drill. I've just cut a small strip of uh, 2000 grit. I'm gonna lube it up a little bit with some WD. I'm just going to hold it here. Get this, these two pieces too. a little bit. Looks pretty good. Let me try that for now. See if it works. We'll put it back in. All right, because the part is dirty, I'm going to wash it in a solvent. I'm using denatured alcohol. I'll just pour it in this cup. Clean it up a little bit. Looking for the signs of scoring.
Looks good so far. Okay, so I'll just make sure it's nice and clean and then we'll put it back together. So I think I'm going to clean in here too, so I'm going to dip my Q tip in denatured alcohol. That's going to do much good, so we'll take like four of these things. The nature of alcohol. Maybe three is the way to go. I'll try three. Looks good. Put it back together now. Remember the coil goes in. Well, let's actually go ahead and insert the coil. Uh, I'm gonna try that again. I'm gonna wash the part again, and I'm gonna wash uh, the spring, and then I'm gonna wash my hands and put it back together. So I'll put this, load this up in here. Put the clip back in. Okay, I got the retaining clip back in. Let's see how it functions there. quite smoothly. I'll go ahead and reinsert this into the vehicle. Okay so there it is reinstalled. I'll just uh, reconnect a couple cables here that I had to get on my way so that it was easier to get at. Okay then I'll reinstall the battery and we'll give it a whirl. Go. It's in. It's idling. The idle doesn't sound that much rougher which would be one of the downsides of Increasing the tolerances and maybe a little more yucky fuel gets through again. I have a new fuel filter. Let's listen to the accelerator response Seems pretty smooth